the number six, right? Seven. Seven. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we're in Bel Pakor and we'll be going from here just a short distance to a great banyan tree. Panchabakra Shiva. We'll hear about the glories of Lord Shiva. We have to hear also about the the four Kumaras in Nimbaditya in the pastime which took place here. And uh, then we'll go on to the Mega well, Oh, Simantini, yeah. We'll pass. The Timan, there's no deity of Simantini except in Iskon, the place which is called Simantini. Simantini yeah. There's nothing there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we have our own. Simantini deity. They have a, there is a place where Simantini is worshipped, but there was no deity there. So when we offered the deity to them, they said it will be our control under our control. So rather than let them control it, they took the deity on our own land at Rajapur, and she's worshipped there. Hmm? Oh, we'll go to the Chankazi Samadhi and we'll have probably drama there. And we'll hear about the Chankazi. And we'll go to Rajpur Jagannath Mandir for breakfast. Yes, after breakfast, there's still Parikrama. We're going over to see the place of Sridhar. Kolodesha Sridhar. And we'll have drama there. And we'll hear also about the pastimes of Kolodesha Sridhar. So it's a nice program. So more, more devotees will be coming, of course, and joining in the course of the day. Probably numbers will expand quite a bit. So. Yeah, this, this, we enter into, yeah, this place is on the border between Rudra Dweep and Simanta Dweep. Some people say it's Rudra Dweep, other people say Simanta Dweep, somewhere on the border. So we'll be entering fully into Simanta Dweep as we move along the road. So we're into the place of hearing, Simanta Dweep is hearing. Rudra Dweep, the process was? Sakyam, friendship, yes. Did you make friends? <laughs> Did you get some new friends here in this yes. place? Yes. yes. We hope so. Yes. Did we try to make friends with the local people? <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes not very easy. But uh, we do want to be friendly. And generally, when we go through with the kirtan, the people are very favorable, very nice. They come out. They greet us. They don't say, why are you coming here? And we avoid the areas where the Mohammedan people live because it just disturbs them. Like when we went to uh, Mysore, yeah, when we came out of Navadweep. The first time we went right through the Muslim village the whole street, the whole long road was Mohammedan pe Muslim people. And so it was very strange atmosphere, very tense. they've got another route. They take us up a back, the side road, and we miss going through the village. It's much better. So, Chankazi, you know, he became a devotee. Doesn't mean all the Muslim people or devotees, but generally there's no tension. And even during the time of the partition, the Sankirtan was going on and the Mohammedan people were, there was no war, there was no bitterness or anything. Because the Chankazi gave the agreement that 
So long as my descendants live, no one will stop the Sankirtan movement. So that has been observed. We see it here in Mayapur. People, Hindu, Muslim people live together peacefully. So you like the altar today? So don't go, don't go, don't go stealing it. <laughs> yeah. Keep close to it, and, and this evening you'll get some of it. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do a lot of hearing today. We hope we'll try to do more hearing. Okay, so the bookstore, bookstore. Hare Krishna, the books. Bhakti Prade Devi Satya Vatya Namo Nama Vrindai Tavasi Devai Priyai Tisavasya Cha So everyone get ready. Quarter to six will be off. Vaishnav Pranam Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namo Nama Ananta Koti Vaishnav Rindaki This is Nittai Prabhu, he is the disciple of Jaipataka Swami Maharaj and he's a caretaker of the Madan Madan Gopal Deity. So he needs your help. If you can give some donations to help him to maintain the worship here of the deity, it will be appreciated. So he'll be coming around. Please try to contribute. <laughs> because tomorrow we just have a, a, a short time to go to the, we go to Mas Mehi, we go to Mas Morari Gupta's house tomorrow morning and then from there we'll go off to our own land back to Mayapur and they have an assembly of all the Parikrama devotees. So usually on this last evening we have a gathering and Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj comes. And, and he's saying he also wants to come tonight. So, those of you who have got any realizations or anything you would like to convey to the devotees, and particularly to Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, then you should be there tonight at the Jagannath Mandir and you'll have an opportunity to speak your realization. We're also expecting a visit from His Holiness Subhak Swami Maharaj sometime in the afternoon or evening. So, please, try to be around. <laughs> you know, don't go off back to Mayapur because Jaipataka Maharaj, Subhak Maharaj and others are going to be there at the Jagannath Mandir. Alright, so we're going to have drama now. Alright, so we have to clear... <laughs>
and this afternoon and this evening. We'll have a program here also. Jag and His Holiness Jag Ajayapataka Swami Maharaj is coming here also to be with us. Alright, so now you'll hear from His Holiness Bhakti Purushottam Swami One Kavita, he has written one poem, Delhi Devotee. Thanks to Mohan Rupa for describing the Leela of Parikrama, morning bath. <laughs> Very special experience when you hear all the devotees calling out, Go Ranga! Go Ranga! So then I know the Odarya is flowing. <laughs> so this is Madhu Sundar, one of the very famous book distributors. <laughs> Number one. Hare <laughs> Krishna. So I have written. Arant Koti Brahma. So we welcome His Holiness, Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj. It's customary at the end of the Parikrama, Srila Jaipataka Maharaj likes to come here and meet the devotees and he likes to hear from them their realizations. He likes to know about what their feelings were about the Parikrama. Maharaj, of course, has been developing this parikrama over many years now. So it's very important to him to hear from you and to know about your feelings, your experiences, everything what's going on out there. So this is your opportunity. He's there. Uh, 
Lord Shiva's temples are more than Lord Krishna. That is the blessing of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna wants to see his devotee worship more than him. So he gave the benediction to Lord Shiva that you will have more temples than me. Many people worship Lord Shiva, of course, simply for material desires. They don't know that Lord Shiva has his own sampradaya, which is present in the form of the Vishnu, Swam Vishnu Swami is the prominent Acharya in that line. And it's present today, particularly at the Pushti Mark is connected to that line. But most people are not aware that Lord Shiva, his greatest mercy is to bring them to the path of devotion. Generally people... Oh. So Lord Shiva is described here as a resident here. Who can describe his glory? The most merciful Panchavakra Mahadeva, five headed Shiva, would fulfill the desires of anyone who asked him anything in the service of Lord Sri Krishna. So once upon a time, an, an aesthetic Brahmana was worshipping Lord Shiva to fulfill their desire. They worship Lord Shiva with real belief for a duration of one paksha, a fortnight. Lord Shiva became very pleased with that. He looked upon them with a very merciful glance and spoke. You are now, you must now ask anything that you desire. The Brahmana said, please give us that which you consider to be the most, the greatest, that which you consider to be the greatest. And Lord Shiva said, there is nothing greater than service to Sri Krishna. So this is Lord Shiva's instruction. The greatest thing he can give, service to Lord Krishna. But the, net, the common people are not aware of that. They simply worship Krishna, Lord Shiva for material desires. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the story of Rika. Rika was worshipping Lord Shiva. He was cutting flesh from his body and offering to Lord Shiva. And still Lord Shiva was not appearing. And then finally, he wanted to offer his own, own head to Lord Shiva. And he was prepared to cut off his own head as an offering to Lord Shiva. At that time, Lord Shiva, being a Vaishnava, is very compassionate. And so he appeared in front of Rikasura and then asked Rikasura what blessing he wanted. And Rika said, I want the benediction, whoever's head I touch, their head will fall off. So Lord Shiva was obliged to give that benediction, but then Brika wanted to touch Lord Shiva's head. So Lord Shiva put his own self into difficulty. Here in this situation, it's described about the Brahmanas. They asked Lord Shiva, what is the greatest thing you can give? We should always think like that. What is the, the greatest thing we can get from service to Krishna? The greatest thing we can get is more service to Krishna. Right? From service, you get so much pleasure in doing service, you want to do more service. Right? You go around on Parikrama, after you go around one time, you want to go around again. Right? Yeah. Who wants to go around again? Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay, try now. <laughs> You can come with Karti. Nara Gopal Prabhu has a very nice parikrama, as we heard yesterday. 
He sticks you in the car. <laughs> you don't have to walk. You know, we also go visiting many places outside of the now that we've done now. There are many wonderful places in connection with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lila to go and visit. You can go up to Katwa, which is not very far away. And in Katwa, you can see the place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. It's the ashram of Keshava Bharati Maharaj. And they have the samadhi of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's hair. After the barber shaved the hair of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they put the hair in samadhi. So that's there in Katwa. Very nice to go and see these places. And not far away from Katwa is Sri, Sri and the place of great devotees like Raghunanda and Thakur, the deity which ate the offering. Raghunanda was such a great devotee, he couldn't in, inspire the deity to accept the offering to eat it. So that deity is there, and not very far away, just two kilometers away from Katwa. And in the south, we have Shantipur. So after the Parikrama, we have Ikarasi. And the day after Ikarasi, the Dwadasi, is the appearance day of Madhavendrapuri. And that's a very big festival. Madhavendrapuri was the guru of Advaita Acharya. And Advaita Acharya's residence is at Shantipur. So you're all invited to go to Shantipur on the Dwadasi and we have a big festival and we see thousands of people. The whole of the people come, you know when you have prasada, then people come from everywhere. You don't know where they come from, but, but there's never any difficulty to distribute prasada. So at Shantipur we have a very big festival. And many devotees will be going. There will be free buses. Buses are free to go to Shantipur. And they bring you back as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have many buses. And you have to get there early to get in the bus. Because all the Bengali devotees, they all like to go too. So if you want to go, you've got to be quick to get a seat in the bus. The buses fill up. But it's a wonderful festival, and everyone who goes there, who takes part in that festival, cooking, and serving prasadam, and eating prasadam, they all get Krishna praise. Krishna praise, yes. So, this is the mercy. This is, you know, the, the residents, the descendants of Advaita Acharya, they're still living there in Shantipur. So, it happened that they couldn't do the festival themselves. They had no means to do anything. And they approached ISKCON and they asked us, could you help us to do this festival? So it was a dream. We would go there every year. And every year, but for many years now, we've been going there to Shantipur and we have a very big festival. We distribute prasadam to thousands of people. So Shantipur is a wonderful place to go and visit. If you haven't been there yet, you have to go. Actually, Srila Prabhupada, at one point, he was thinking to make Shantipur the world headquarters of ISKCON. Before he got landed in Mayapur, he was thinking, we'll have a temple, we'll just make Shantipur the headquarters. And he was going to get land there. But later on, they got landed in Mayapur, so... Shantipur was forgotten, but Srila Prabhupada had pastimes there in Shantipur. He used to go there to Shantipur. Before he went to America, he was going there. He was chanting there and praying there. And after he went to America, he came back, he also went there. So a very important holy place. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, Advaita Acharya. They were all there in Shantipur. They would take prasadam there. And that place is there in Shantipur. And when you go to Shantipur, you can see also the original painting of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Maharaj Prataparudra, he had he commissioned an artist 
they do a painting of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they have that they have that illustration there in Shantipur. If you haven't seen the original portrait of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you can see it there in Shantipur. So there are many, many places to be seen around Goramandala Bhumi. We're only in Navadweep Dham. And this is Panchavakra Shiva's abode here. We want to understand the importance of Lord Shiva. We say, Aradhanam Sarvesham, Vishnu Aradhanam Param. Of all kinds of worship, the worship of Lord Vishnu is the greatest. But Vishnu Aradhanam Param. Kasmat Paratanam Devi Kadiyanam Samataram. So Tadiya, those things which are in relationship to Vishnu, is even greater. So worship of Lord Shiva is also very important for us. Just like we worship Tosi Devi, we worship Srila Prabhupada, we also offer our respects to the Lord Shiva. When we go to Jagannath Mandir, you'll see we have one Shiva Linga there. We have a big program on Shiva Ratri, just past. Couple, a week or two ago, we had a very big program. Many people come. Now, you know, when I joined the movement, we had a very bad idea about Lord Shiva. You know, oh, Shiva, oh, no, you know. <laughs> and, and there was even a story that somebody gave Rudraksha beats to Prabhupada to chant on, and Prabhupada went, oh. <laughs> he thought, this, this is not for the world. We chant on Tosi beats. We don't chant on Rudraksha. But and similarly, worship of Lord Shiva. We don't offer Tosi to Lord Shiva. We offer Bilba leaves to Lord Shiva. This great here. Right? Bilba Paksha. This is here. So the worship of Lord Shiva is done with Bilba leaves, not with Tosi. Tosi is for worshipping Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva is not Vishnu Tattva. Lord Shiva is Shiva Tattva. He's on his own. Vishnu Tattva. That is Lord Nityananda. Advaita Acharya is also Vishnu Tattva. Who is that? Who is Advaita Acharya? Mahavishnu. Who else? Sada Shiva. Yes, Sada Shiva means Sada Shiva in the spiritual world. There's the four-armed form of Sada Shiva. It's a Vishnu form. He has his own planet in the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha planet. So we worship Lord Shiva, we offer our worship to him. At the same time, we understand that Lord Shiva is not the Supreme Lord, but he is a Vaishnava Yata Shambhu. Lord Shiva is, Lord Shambhu is the greatest Vaishnava. Why is he such a great Vaishnava? because he delivers so many fallen conditioned souls. He is the Guna Avatar. He is in charge of the mode of ignorance. All the people who are influenced by that mode of ignorance, Lord Shiva thinks how to deliver them. And even it said that sometimes he will take ghosts and such like, and he will place them in the womb of women who have sex at irreligious times. You place them in the womb of women who, who have child in an irreligious manner. And this way they get an opportunity to take birth. That is Lord Shiva's compassion. Lord Shiva also, he drank the ocean of, he drank the poison from the ocean of milk. When the demigods and the demons were churning the ocean, they produced poison. A Lord Shiva kindly took that poison and held it in his throat. So he became known as Nila. Right. And Lord Shiva also took the Ganges on his head. When Mother Ganga was coming down from the higher planets, Maharaj Bhagirat needed someone to take the force of Mother Ganga because the force of Ganga coming from the higher planets onto the earth would knock the earth out of its orbit. So it was agreed that Lord Shiva would take the Ganga on his head. So it said the hair of Lord Shiva is always wet from the water of the Ganges. 
Lord Shiva is also decorated with the crescent moon. That crescent moon was given to him to keep his body cool because he had drank the poison. He drank that halahara poison which was being produced by the churning of the milk ocean. So he was given the crescent moon to keep his head cool. So Lord Shiva is so, so merciful that he came in the Kali Yuga as Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya was given the order. Maya Vada Asachastram Pratinam Bodha Muchati. In the Kali Yuga, preach the Maya Vadi philosophy because it covered Buddhism. So Lord Shiva came as Shankaracharya. And as Shankaracharya, he did great service because he brought back the Vedas. The Vedas had been practically forgotten about. India was full of Buddhism. You can go to the Mathura Museum. Now we think of Mathura, oh, the birthplace of Lord Krishna. But you go to the Mathura Museum, what do you see in the museum? So many Buddhas. Many, many Buddha statues. Because Mathura became the capital of Buddhism. That was the situation before Shankaracharya appeared. And it was Shankaracharya who preached and brought back the Vedic culture. He defeated the Buddhists. And he also, one of the problems with the Buddhism was everyone was just simply doing nothing. Everybody just, because the, the, the Buddhist philosophy is nothing is real, life has no purpose, there's no meaning to anything. They do nothing, everyone was just sitting meditation. They just wanted nirvana, didn't want to do anything. So there was no farming, the fields were not being plowed, nothing was being done. The whole country was coming into ruination. But Shankaracharya came and he brought back the Vedic culture. The Buddhists were teaching everyone is one, everyone, we're all the same. There's no Brahman, there's no Shatri, no Vaishya, no Sudra. We're all just simply, what are we? We're nothing. Zero. You listen to the Buddhists preach, only they speak about zero, nothing. They never mention God. They will never mention anything about a creator. They will simply say, no, life is, there's no, nothing is real, everything is illusion. But Shankaracharya came and he preached, there's one. He brought people back to the Veda and he re-established Brahmins who were not corrupted, who were not degraded. He brought back a very high standard of Brahminical culture and he got the people to go back to work. They started to do work again, farming, taking care of the cows, growing the crops. So it's much more practical philosophy. So we're very grateful to Lord Shiva for all of his wonderful services here. And this banyan tree, generally, Lord Shiva resides under a banyan tree. Although his wife is Mother Durga, she's a, in charge of the whole material creation. But Brahma says, Shristi Siti, Pralaya Sadhana Sattireka, Jaye Vayashya Bhuvanani Nivarti Durga, Echan Rupa Mapiyashya Chachaisa Tesa, Gori Namari The creating, maintaining, and annihilating deity of the mundane world is worshipped by all people as Durga. I adore the primeval Lord under whose connection Durga conducts herself. The mother Durga is so powerful, she controls the whole material creation. And Lord Shiva is her husband. But they live under a tree. So it said one time, they built a house. They built a very nice house out of gold. And of course, when you build a house, you have to bring the brahmanas to do the Griha Pravesh. So they brought the brahmanas to do the ritual so they could enter into the house. 
But when you bring the Brahmanas to do the rituals, you have to give them some dakshin. So Lord Shiva, what's he going to do? What's he got? Well, he said, I have my house. So the Brahmanas, they took away the house. They took everything. <laughs> so Lord Shiva thought, what's the point? Have a house. No need to have house. So that's why Lord Shiva lives under the tree, even though his wife is the controller of the whole cosmic manifestation. They're quite happy to live under the tree. It's pointed out the devotees of Lord Shiva generally, they're very opulent. They have a lot of wealth, a lot of opulence, very famous people, powerful people. They worship Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva can fulfill material desires. So materialistic people are very fond to worship Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva fulfills their desires. He's Asutosh. He easily pleases. <coughs> Fulfills all the way to the, they get everything they want, but they don't get the real mercy of Lord Shiva. It's pointed out those devotees of Lakshmi Narayan and Radha Krishna, they're not so wealthy, they're not so rich, they're not so opulent. The goddess of fortune, Lakshmi and Lord Narayan, they're wealthy, they live in the palace, they have great opulence. Dwarka, the place of opulence but the devotees of the lord they're not usually so wealthy they live simply but they have the special wealth which the shivites don't have the shivites those who are worshippers of lord shiva they don't have peace of mind they don't have any real control of the mind and senses they're very attached they're very materially ambitious. But the devotees of Lord Narayan and Lord Krishna, they enjoy that satisfaction, that peace of mind, that inner pleasure. So that is the real wealth, not the temporary flickering wealth of the material world. So in this way we understand something about the significance of worshipping Lord Shiva. We want to get from him the greatest thing. And we're going to hear? Mm -hmm. Okay. So before we have a drama, here's Pans. Uh, for the next place that we're going to like to Thank you, Maharaj. So this place, this is uh, this is where Simantini is worshipped, usually. All the Parikram parties, they will come here and they will talk about Simantini Devi in this particular place. So for many years we were coming here, there was nothing, there was no deities established. We would always stop and have a talk, have a talk. And then after some time it was arranged that we would also bring deity of Simantini. So that deity, although initially the plan was not to put it in Mayapur, it ended up in Mayapur, at Rajapur, where we're going. You will see the Jagannath Mandir, the deity of Simantini, been installed there. Now some people may say, oh, Iskon is encouraging worship of demigods by installing deity of Timantini who is not different from Mother Durga. But you should understand it's not just worship of a demigod, but we are showing Gora Lila because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there with Mother Durga, with Timantini Devi, giving her his blessing. So pastime is told how in Satya Yuga one time Lord Shiva was chanting the name of Gauranga. Gauranga. And Lord Shiva was chanting that name of Gauranga and the more he chanted he began to dance. Right? Are you also dancing? Arrivo. Arrivo. Well I saw some people dancing, not everybody. But just with Maharaj there, the people near to him were dancing. And Lord Shiva was dancing, he was in ecstasy. And his wife, Parvati, she was watching, she was she approached him and she said, What is this? 
What name are you chanting? What is it? What kind of mantra is this? You chant this name, you dance in ecstasy. Please tell me, what is this? The Lord Shiva told his wife about how this was the name of the Lord in his most merciful form. He's going to appear in the Kali Yuga and he will distribute not just simply bhakti, but he will distribute Krishna praise to everyone. Lord Brahma, he lamented that he didn't get Krishna praying. He didn't get to take part in Krishna's pastime. He was simply just some demigod controlling the universe. He thought, what is the good of being Brahma? I would be much better to be a cowherd boy. And I could be in Krishna, I could be with Lord Krishna in his pastime. And I could enjoy the praying which he gives. So, even Lord Brahma lamented that he did not get that opportunity to develop Krishna praying. So Lord Shiva told Parvati that you can chant this mantra, you will also, you can also get that praying, that love of God. So Parvati took it very seriously. She also began to chant the holy name, Goranga. Chanting for days, and after some days, the Lord, Lord Garanga, appeared in his most merciful form. Very tall, with beautiful long black hair, and his arms raised up in the air, and his eyes all, like a lotus all the way across his face to his ears, his arms down to his knees, all very auspicious and all attractive. So Parvati, seeing the Lord, she fell at his feet and then she began to pray to him that I'm so unfortunate that I'm here and my, my job is just to bewilder all the living entities. All of us, we are bewildered by Maya, the material energies personified. By Maya, she can bewilder the minds of even great souls. So she said, I'm just, I'm just doing this kind of service. It's, it's, I don't get to relish the real mood of being your devotee. I'm not getting that frame. I'm not getting to see your pastimes. So Lord Goranga then explained to Mother Parvati, she told her that you are my, you are the expansion of Radha. You are none different from my potency. And you are the expansion of the original potency in the form of Shimati Radharani. So you should understand that you're doing that, the service here, but in other places you're doing different service, just like in Vrindavan, you're known as Purnamati. And as Purnamati, you're arranging all the pastimes for the divine couple. Here in Mayapur, you have two forms. One is Chimantini and the other is Prodamaya. We saw Prodamaya over in Navadweep. When we were in Navadweep, just in the marketplace here, Prodamaya resides there. So in this way, she is doing service for Lord Krishna. And when Lord, Lord Goranga told Parvati how you are actually doing this wonderful service, you, you, you're in your different forms, you're taking part in my pastimes, you're just here in this place, you're doing different service. So when Timantini heard this, then she fell at the feet of Lord Goranga and she took the dust from Lord Goranga's feet and she put it in the Timanti, in the parting in her hair. The lady sparked her hair in the middle and she put the dust from Goranga's feet just in the middle of the parting there. And in this way, this place became known as Timanta Dwi. So, when we go to Rajapur, you will see how Simantini is there and how she is worshipped along with Lord Goranga. So this is the pastime which took place here. Now we're going to have drama, so you can 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Down? Yes? Yes, yes, okay. So this is the Kolobeka Sridhar um, Memorial, the tribute to Kolobeka Sridhar. We've been coming here every year and some years ago they renovated the shrine and made it a little better. But, uh, you know, we could do more. It's not really ISKCON, that, that shrine, but everybody comes here to speak about the glories of Kolobeka Street High. <laughs> you can see it. It's not very far away from the Yoga Peace, but it's a little bit quiet, isolated. When, they, when Lord Chaitanya was calling, he was giving benedictions, he told the devotees, go and bring Sridhar. And the devotees said, who? He said, Sridhar. And they didn't know. He said, who's that? Okay. Lord Chaitanya had to tell them, oh, you go over there, down that road, across the fields, you'll see, you'll hear him. Lord Chaitanya told the devotee, when you get in that area, you will hear him. Why? Because he is chanting the holy name. Yes, sir. He didn't just sit and hold his beats. He chanted loudly. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna Krishna! Krishna Hare Hare! Hare Hare! Hare Hare! Loud chanting was always the method, just like Haridas also was doing loud chanting, Kolaveka Sridhar chanted loudly. Prabhupada used to say, the louder you chant, the more powerful it becomes. The loud chanting, you give the holy name to everyone who hears you. Who is better? One who is just chanting for his own benefit? Or if you chant for others' benefit, if you chant loudly, then everyone, every living entity who hears you, they will benefit. How to benefit other living entities? Just like in the tree, there are so many living entities. There are birds, there are insects, so many different creatures are living. They all benefit by the loud chanting of the holy name. So Haridas Thakur was asked, why you have to chant so loud? He said, who is better, one who maintains himself or one who can maintain a hundred people? Obviously, if you can maintain a hundred people, it's very wonderful, very glorious. So loud chanting is recommended. Give the mercy to others. So Kolaveka Sridhar, we're going to hear something about his pastimes here. Sundar Chaitanya Maharaj is going to tell us something. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, 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 Ram, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, Hari. Sridhar, get into now, neighbor. Krishna, Krishna. This man is so low class. He's made our neighbor who we're supposed to be the Brahmins. How did he get a land in our neighborhood? Ram, Ram, Hari, Hari. The greatest misfortune to have a neighbor like Sridhar. He said he's chanting Mahamantra, but he doesn't know the real Mahamantra is Jack Ali, Jack Ali. If only he didn't have to make so much noise. My goodness, we've got to have some peace and quiet here so I can hear the movies at night. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Ram. Do we have some luck? Is he doing anything? Anyone? He's crying every day and night. He dished up our sleep. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. The whole know no one is able to sleep. Hari Ram, Hari Ram. What kind of neighbor do we have? See his dhoti, how many holes he has. And see our dhoti, how much opponent it is. 
I don't, I don't know. What is the solution? How to get rid of him? How to get him out? We have to think. It's not enough. It's, not, it's just no good kind of man here in our place. Oh, Krishna. Oh, my. Oh. Rama, Hare, 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 Krishna, I think we should have some pity on him. Let's go and counsel, try to counsel him. Come to our camp, chant the name of Kali, be opulent, be healthy and strong like us. Hare Krishna. My neighbors. <laughs> So nice that you've come by. How may how may I serve you? No, don't put on this humility to us. Come on. <laughs> Be yourself. We know how proud you are. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. What kind of a gentleman you are. You disturb our sleep and chant the name of the Lord. Right. I I'll, I'll chant softly. I'll chant softly. And you have to chant the name of the mother, Jayakali. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I must rest now, just a little bit, so I can do my... I do have to earn little money every day. I, I, I earn a little bit by my, my bananas and my, my gourds and... So I'll, 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 I'll leave you in peace. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh, another day, another day. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, they're good. Good ones today, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And all oh, these bananas. I wonder. Yeah. Very good today. When Nimai 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 When when Nimai comes <laughs> I, you know, because every time he he, he wants to pay me nothing, <laughs> so, so I'll give him a discount. Because uh, all, anyways, I'm going to give him a discount. So I, I'll start with a discount. That's my plan today. The ordinary price is one rupee, and I will offer for fifty paisa. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll work. Okay. Oh, there he is. Nimai. Nimai, see? I have, and I today, I'm going to offer you these wonderful bananas at a discount. Oh, yes, you know. <laughs> well, they are good. <laughs> see? One rupee only. <gasps> one rupee, just for a whole dozen. No, one five paisa. Five paisa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, my! I know always you cut it in half, but five paisa? How, how can well, how can one live? Of course, and how can I serve Mother Ganga? You know that that fifty percent of everything I get is goes to serving Mother Ganga. Yes. So at least fifty paisa. Yes. Five paisa. Five paisa. <laughs> but how will I serve Ganga? Every day you you buy items to serve Ganga. But don't yes. you know I am the father of oh. Ganga? Oh. <laughs> so why don't you give it to me at no price? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>